Hi YouTube and welcome to Maria's Kitchen. So I remember a while back that um, I was looking for uh, an exact recipe on how to make um, pasteles, but I wanted, I knew how to make it, but I wanted the exact measurements of, you know, proportion wise of what I needed, how much of each ingredient I needed to complete a box of pasteles. And I remember looking online, I could not find a recipe that gave you the exact uh, measurements because everybody kind of did their own thing and they were like eyeballing everything so I didn't really have a, a sense of direction when they came to um, guessing uh, um, how much of what to put so after a few years of um, watching other people picking up some things from other people from friends from family and um, things that I remember growing up as far as watching my grandfather make the pasteles and stuff I was um, able to perfect my own recipe of pasteles the way I make it, you know, my, my own way. And um, I'm ready to share with you guys. And um, this recipe is basically for a box of pasteles. Now, why am I sharing, showing you how to make a box of pasteles? Why not such a small, why not a small quantity? Why a big quantity? Well, the reason being is because, you know, um, uh, the holidays are around the corner. And right now we're still we're just hitting September so you know now would be a good time I thought that now would be a good time to make the video and also you know post it so that you know when the holiday season does come you guys you know can watch the video you can share it with your friends and and, and family and um, you guys will have an ex a video that gives you the exact measurements on how to you know make a box of pateras now this recipe will make you roughly about eight dozens to eight and a half dozens but it all depends on how much masa you use and um how much meat you fill inside of your pasteles so you know i hope you enjoy this pastel this, this uh pastel well yeah if you make it but i also hope that you enjoy this video and you know you share it with others and bear with me because this video is going to be pretty long okay so it's going to take a few days to make this video so for 40 pounds of um, green bananas you are going to need um, about 30 pounds of meat now I have one two three four packages of meat which is gonna go a little bit over um, 30 pounds but that's fine because um, I'm making a little extra than a, than, than, than a box of guineos a box of pateles so you know i'm just going to show you how to make a box but i'm actually making two boxes okay so um what you're going to need is about for one box 20 to 30 pounds of meat now um if you are going to use pork then you will need about 30 uh, pounds of pork if you want to do a more chicken then you will need about 30. now if you want to do them chicken and pork which is what i usually do um, I usually make most of my pateles out of pork because that's what mostly sells and yes I do sell the pateles so if you don't want to go through this process you can easily just look me up on Facebook and uh, Maria Caceres and uh, you can message me and you can order a dozen of pateles okay and um, I usually use uh, about 20 pounds of um, pork and then I do the other 10 pounds of chicken so um what you can do is you can buy the actual penny and the uh, actual pork shoulder and you can cut it up yourself or you can get the pork shoulder and have them at the meat department cut it for you in slices to make it easier or you can do what I do which is this is what I prefer this is my first choice that I do first I go to BJ's and I try I try to find a package that has the basically the panini boneless right which is like right here boneless pork and it has like chuletas and stuff like you know they look like chuletas it's all boneless so I try to buy these if I'm not able to find these then my next bet is for me to actually go ahead and buy um, the whole pork shoulder and cut it up myself now the reason why I prefer these is because this is less of a hassle when you're cutting it up and when you're cleaning you don't have to cut around the bone because everything is boneless so I find this a lot easier and, and um, it's faster if you get the one with the bones it is time consuming you have to have more patience and stuff and you have to give yourself enough time to cut everything and stuff 
so um so if you're gonna do it with chicken and pork then you would use uh your total pounds of meat have to be 30 pounds either 20 um 20 of pork if you're gonna do it the way you should do it and then the other 10 of chicken so the first thing you're gonna do is um you're gonna rinse all this now i'm gonna rinse it but i'm gonna open it package by package and you're gonna cube it cube it small like small um square pieces like the way you would do when you're gonna make chicken stew or when you're gonna make beef stew but the only thing is that you're gonna cut them a little bit smaller than the actual size that you use for beef stew and chicken stew now some people cut them super super tiny i don't like to cut them so so small i like them to be uh meaty um not too small not too big but a decent size so you know that's the first thing you're gonna do so cut everything i'm not gonna show you how to cut it because i'm pretty sure everybody knows how to cut how to cut uh you know meat you just have to cube it okay and then after i cut it then i'll show you how i season my meat okay now this is day one day one is you grab the meats okay you rinse them in water you cut them up you season them and you leave them marinating overnight that's day one okay so now i have my pork cut up and this is the size all right i don't i don't like them too big or 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 too small let me see if i can get closer see like this some of them are like this size and some of them are this size you see okay some people cut them really really small this is how i like it so you wash it with cold water first rinse it with cold water and now we're going to start um adding limes so this here is um i told you for the package you're going to use 30 pounds a total of 30 pounds so if this is 30 let's say this is 30 of um of pork you're going to use about three lines i already put one line in it so let me just squeeze the last two lines You're going to need um sason so for 30 we are going to use four packets of sason okay for 30 pounds so all 30 inside okay okay Next thing we're gonna need is adobo. This one is sin pimiento. Well, you can use the one with pimiento, but I'm also gonna put pepper in it. So if you have the one with pepper, then don't put extra pepper. So you're gonna go pretty heavy on this because you want it to have enough seasoning. Next is sazonador. Okay, this one's gonna go pretty heavy on it also. When it comes to the seasoning, I can't give you measurements because I eyeball everything. Next is the round black pepper. So I took off the top, so just be careful. So be careful with this one. There. Next is the garlic powder. Oh, I only have a little bit. Might as well use it. Next is the ground cumin. Yes, I had ground cumin to my meat. Okay, and last is your ground oregano. This you don't have to add too much of it. Okay, grab a spoon, and now you are ready to mix until you see that all the meat is completely coated. So let me. Oh, I know you see the color; it doesn't look like it has enough seasoning, and the color looks like it could be darker. Now. 
some people what I've seen them do is that they add a chote which is what I have here but I do not like to add a chote right now because this already has grease so I like to cook this first and then I add the achote to the sauce as I'm stewing it. So this is how I lightly season it first, overnight, leave it marinating. Then I cook it. Later on is when I do the, um, add the achote. So it's in a bowl, in several bowls because this is a lot. Or you could put it in a big pot and leave it in the fridge overnight. Or you can also prepare this, freeze it, and then when you are ready to, um, to prepare your, your pasteles to cook it, then you can take it out, you know, to cook it, the frosted to cook it. So this is the first step, okay? The next thing that I wanna explain is that I do add sofrito, but the sofrito I add as I'm cooking it. So the next thing that you wanna do is that if you do not have homemade sofrito, I suggest you make yourself homemade sofrito. And if you, do, if you do not know how to make homemade sofrito, I also have a video on homemade sofrito that you can follow and it's very simple and it's, you know, it's, it's easy. But um, I do not recommend um, store brand sofrito because it does not taste the same. It, it doesn't. It's not as fresh. If you do the homemade sofrito, it'll give it more of that, you know, Latin taste and stuff and it'll be much more fresh. A lot of the, the, the sofritos that they sell in the stores are watered down because they don't use, um, a lot of them don't use olive oil when they, you know, put it in the food processor to puree the, the, the vegetables. What they add is water in replacement of the olive oil and you put the olive oil and it gives it that nice, uh, it, you know, it just mar it, it marinates the, the vegetables together. It just tastes better and it's thicker and it's not as watery. But also, if you um, do not want to go through the process of making sofrito, because some people don't want to go through the process, I also sell sofrito as well. So you can, like I said, Maria Caceres on Facebook, and you can just message me, and then we'll get to talking. Okay, so do this, and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, so now that we have the pork already cut up and uh, seasoned and washed, we're going to move on to the boneless chicken. And here... I have 10 pounds of boneless chicken that I'm also going to be using for the pasteles. So I have it here in the sink, I'm not gonna wash it in the sink. I'm gonna put it in a bowl and I'm gonna cut it up cube also like if you're making chicken stew. And um, then we're gonna wash it and add the other things as well. So remember, if you're going to do pasteles, of, a box of pasteles of only chicken, then you would need about 30 pounds. And this here is 10 pounds, okay? So 10 pounds because I'm using some chicken. I'm showing you how to do some with chicken and some with, uh, with pork, okay? So this video is just preparing the meat, seasoning them, and cooking them, okay? Okay, so here I have my chicken and it's already cut in cubes. Okay, this is the size I uh, used. You can see it, this is the size. Okay, you can cut them smaller than that, but I, I like them that size because the chicken naturally lets out um, water when you cook it. So it's already washed with water and it's already in vinegar. You still have, see, I still have some liquid, but that's fine. So we're gonna go on with the seasoning and I'm gonna use for 10 pounds of chicken, four packs of sasson. Now this is to leave it marinating. We're seasoning it so that we can leave it marinating overnight. Okay. Next is I'm gonna use a sazonador. This one I'm seasoning it. I usually season it different from the from the bendy, from the pork. Okay. Then the next see this one is garlic powder. See garlic powder. Generous amount. And the next, the final is onion powder. If you have onion powder, use onion powder instead. But um, I don't have onion powder, so I'm gonna use chopped onions instead. And you can be generous with this as well. If you want to have that onion flavor, okay? Next then, you need a spoon. Okay, you can mix it. That's what I'm doing right now. 
Okay, I do not add sofrito to this because I do that when I'm cooking. I do not add oil to this because I do that when I'm cooking. I add the achote afterwards while it's cooking and stuff. And the sofrito and also fresh garlic while it's cooking. This is just a light season to marinate. Okay, so then you're going to leave this in the fridge overnight. Or if you are doing this like a, a week in advance like if you buy it the same day you cut it the same day season it the same day which i find it easier to do it that when you do it pateles and then you freeze it it's already seasoned so when you defrost it you don't have to do any of that you save time you just basically have to cook it defrost and cook so that's you know basically what i'm doing so you either season it the day before and you leave it in the refrigerator marinating overnight or you can prepare it, buy it the same day. I don't mean like buy it, freeze it, and then defrost it, and then freeze it again. No, don't do that. If you're going to season it the same day, then you can freeze it. And like a week later or whatever, you know, you take it out to then cook it. It's not good for you to have it frozen, defrost it, season it, froze, freeze it again, and then defrost it again to cook it. That's that's not good. I, I don't recommend that. So don't do that. You can mess up um, the meat like that. Okay, so this is what you're going to do. You leave it overnight. And again, this is 10 pounds for the pastelis. Guys, so we are ready for our next step and the next uh, list of ingredients, okay? So if you haven't already done so, if you don't have any ready, go ahead and prepare your achote. And this is oil with the uh, achote seeds. So you're going to put the achote seeds into a pot and the pot is going to have oil. And you're going to heat it up just enough until it releases its color. Okay. So you're kind of looking for like a dark color. Now um, I have a, a, this is a pote that I have here, a pretty large one. But I have to make more because this is just enough for the two meats that I'm going to put in and also for... Um, for when I wrap it, but I need more of this achote oil for the masa, okay? And for 40, um, for 40 pounds of, of bananas, you're gonna use two packages of banana leaves, okay? So I'm not gonna show you how to do it because if you're Spanish, you should already know how this goes. Basically, you're gonna wash this. After you wash this with water, you're gonna open up the leaves and you're gonna cut them down to size. Okay. I'm not gonna tell you the size either because the size it all depends on how 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 much of the banana leaf you or how much of the pastel you want wrapped in the banana leaf. For me, I cut them about this this size. Okay, that's for me. That's how I do them. Some people wrap the whole pastel in it and then they wrap it again in the paper. I don't do that. Okay, so it just depends on you. For me, I use two packages of this. So make sure they are already defrosted. I used to put them in the sink here and let them continue to defrost, okay? The next step that I use for my masa is a roasted sweet peppers, which is right here. This is a pack, a twin pack that I get from BJ's, okay? So I'm going to use two jars for one box of guineos, okay? So each jar is 24 ounces. It doesn't have to be this brand. It can be any brand of roasted sweet uh, red peppers, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to take them because they come out in half. They come in halves. So you're going to take them, you're going to cut them down and basically cut them down into like, like cubes, like little squares. Or, or if you want to put them in strips in the masa, I cut them into squares, okay? And you're going to set them aside. You're going to drain it and set it aside. But the juice, you're not going to throw out because the juice we're going to use for the masa. So just drain it to, to put it on the side and save it somewhere, okay? And the next thing that we're gonna need is um, our olives. I'm using here two large jars of olives. This, this comes in a twin pack and I get them from BJ's as well. So um, this one says, pit it al calparado, okay? So it has the capers. Where is it? The little seed capers here. So um, I take these out. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to take this out as well. So and the rest of the olives you're going to cut in half. If you can get the salad olives in this size, then that eliminates the process and you don't have to cut them. 
but I didn't have the salad olives in this size so that's why I'm going through the process so two of these is enough for your 30 pounds of meat okay so um the whole thing is not going to go into one meat because remember I'm showing you how to make the chicken and I'm also showing you how to make the pork okay so when I'm ready to show you I'm how I'm preparing mine and cooking it then I'll tell you how much I'm putting into each one okay so go ahead and prepare this process do this I suggest the day before instead of the day of just so that the day of you would just have to focus on cooking the meat and actually um, doing the masa like you know pelando lo guineo and you know pelando the yaltia and all that stuff okay so we're gonna go and do this and then you know then we'll move on to the next step okay I'm ready to start cooking my um, meat for the pateles. So here I have the pot with chicken and I filled it up with just enough water to cover the chicken, okay? And over here in this pot, I have um, my pork. Now, together, remember what I told you, for a box of guineos, it should total 30 pounds together. So I'm doing a little bit of both. So I got my pork here and I got my chicken here and the pork, I did the same thing. I filled it up with enough water just to cover the top remember that the chicken you if you have some top that's not like you see here it's not completely in it's fine because the chicken suelta agua and then uh, it lets go of water and um also with the with the pork the pork is going to let go of some um grease okay so you're going to leave that here and you're going to bring it to a boil until the water to until the chicken turns white and soft and also the pork turns brown like the color is supposed to be when it's cooked so you're going to bring them both to a boil medium high we haven't started your achote we haven't made prepared your achote now would be the time for you to make your achote i have my achote oil here and the reason why is because um when the chicken is almost done and also the pork we're going to put some achote inside both pots Plus you need the achote for the masa, which we are doing today also. And um, you also need the achote for when you are folding the pastel to put, you know, on the hoja, on the banana leaf, okay? So make sure you have all the other steps prepared and if you haven't done them, now would be a good time to do them, okay? Okay, so my chicken is cooked through. So now I'm ready to start adding my ingredients. First thing that we're gonna add is, um, sorry, we're gonna add fresh garlic. Okay, now this fresh garlic I didn't buy. I puree myself with olive oil. I'm gonna do a scoop about that much. Next is we're gonna have sofrito. Yeah. Same spoon if you use sofrito. This is homemade sofrito. I'm gonna add two scoops to this. If you do not know how to make sofrito, remember that I have a video on it and I'll show you. And you can watch that. Okay, let's give this a quick stir. All right, so your pork is gonna take a lot longer to cook through because it's pork. The chicken cooks through faster. So I'll show you how to do the chicken first. Okay. Next, you're gonna need one can of garbanzo beans. Drained, don't use the, the liquid. Well, I don't use the liquid. Um, next, Sobre el sazón. Okay. Next, one can of tomato sauce. Yeah. Stir it. Oh, now I can just get back to some semblance of the moment. If there's a party, 
Shut him down. He's sleepy as he can. Okay, now. Okay. Last, okay. Last but not least, we're gonna have uh, the jar of olives that I told you to cut in half and remove the capers. Okay. So um, this is a, a large jar, 19 and one fourth ounce. We're gonna use about, leave about three quarters out. So almost the whole thing, a little more than half. We're gonna dump the whole thing. Okay, so you're gonna stir this. Now if you don't like a lot of olives like that, then you don't have to put a lot of olives. But I put enough olives. Stir this. Okay. Oh, I got a chunk of a chunk of ajo here. Oh well, it's okay. <laughs> It'll give it flavor. Okay. Last but not least, we are going to add some achote oil. is good. Move it around, I'll let you know for sure. Yeah. This amount is good. Okay, so we have to taste it to see if it's the flavor. Just needs a tad more of a double. Let's give it another stir. Taste it again. Mm -hmm. Your chicken is now done. So when this is almost done, then I'll get back to you and I'll show you how to season the pork. Okay, so now we are ready to season our pork. So we're going to start off the same way with <clears throat> the garlic. Now for this one, I'm going to be put two scoops. Oh, look at your face. Go with puppy. Go puppy, go puppy. And we're gonna use two scoops of your homemade sofrito. Actually, I'm gonna put three. Okay, so now you're gonna stir it. Oh, wait a minute. I turned off my fire to switch and I've gotta turn it back on. As you're cooking this, it's important for you to stir it because if you do not, you're going to have big chunks like this see here that are going to cook together. So now with the spoon, I'm just going to break it up. Okay. Let me show everything has garlic. See, break it up. Break it up here. Okay. Next, I'm going to put two sobres of sazon. Okay. 
got bonzo beans, two cans, and the water drained. No water. No juice. I mean. Give this a stir. Okay. Next, your olives. A large jar. No juice. Just the olives cut up, and it's the whole can. Okay, and stir it. Okay, two cans of tomato sauce. put everything now you have to have another spoon on the side because once you finish stirring this completely then you have to taste it to see if it needs more salt or more adobo if i feel like it's missing something i usually add just salt or adobo okay i try to do the soft not the soft first. i try to more add adobo not salt because your masa is going to have already salt Try to watch the assault. Think a very, very little bit. While we're at it, take your chote. Your chote is the last thing you're gonna add. And you're gonna pour chote. I'm gonna put about that much. Let's stir it and see. And I'll let you know. I'm gonna let this cook here for like another 10 minutes turn it off and then we'll go on to the masa okay so now we are ready to introduce the ingredients of the masa so I'm using one box of green bananas and they have to be green green and this is 40 pounds I'm gonna use about seven medium yautia yautia blanca yautia white and I'm going to use this piece of calabaza and half of this piece for the masa. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grate it and um, you gotta make it, get it mushy. So you can either do it by hand or if you have a machine, you do it by machine. So I'm not gonna show you the process of that because it's a very long process. So just go ahead, peel everything, clean everything and make sure you grate everything and then I'll show you the next step. Okay guys, so now we're ready to start uh, seasoning our um, masa. So we're going to start off we're gonna start off with the um, sofrito. I'm putting two jars of sofrito. Yes, two jars, and each jar is one pint. So I'm putting two of them. I have 
six, six um sasson, six packs. Two jars of the roasted peppers that are cut up. You can cut them in slices or you can cut them, you can cube them like this. One can of evaporated milk. juice of, of the um, sweet peppers the roasted sweet peppers so I have it in this bowl in this bottle because I separated it so this is the juice of two jars okay I'm gonna leave reserve a little bit I put about half a little more than half I'm gonna reserve a little bit just in case because I still have to add a chote and last we're gonna put, I'll show there, we're gonna put a good amount. Okay. I show this, it's enough to make the masa soft. So I, after you finish mixing all of this, then you have to check the texture of the masa. I usually check it with my hand. And then we'll see. You also have to taste it. So you're gonna have sazonador on the side, garlic powder, and salt in case you need to add to it. Okay, so I added the rest of the juice from the roasted peppers. So you're using definite two, the juice of two jars of the roasted pepper and two jars of roasted peppers. Now, we need to add, we need to give it more color so we're going to add more achote. Okay. And um, I'm going to put uh, about two cups of the juice of the meat into this. Two cups of the broth of the meat, whichever one you want to do, whether the chicken or the pork. And continue mixing. Okay. Now we're going to add some seasoning to the masa, which is bland. Because remember, when you put it to boil, um, when you put it to boil, um, you have to put salt in the, in the water to put it to boil. And also it loses some um, if you have white spots like this when you're mixing that means that your your masa is not completely mixed so you have to keep mixing it until you do not have any white spots okay so now we're gonna add we're gonna start with the sazonador Just a generous amount this is 40 pounds of green bananas plus the carabasa plus all the other good stuff we put so garlic powder generous amount I'm being Last but not least, we're gonna add salt. Now, you don't wanna overdo it with the salt because we did add um, salt to, we did add the juice of the roasted pepper, which has salt. And the, and the broth of the, um, the meat. 
So you're going to mix this and you're going to take a taste. And if you feel like it needs more seasoning, you keep going until it gets the right flavor that you're looking for. So I, I want to show you guys something. This is how you know if you have enough achote. Well, as for me, this is how I know. If you move the masa and it feels too heavy for your hand, then you need more achote. You need more oil. Okay? Or more oil, you need more liquid. Also, this is the right color that you should have on your masa. It should not be loud, lighter than this. It should be this color. Okay? Um, make sure that you put the measurements that I put of the liquid. Two cups of the broth. Two, um, the, the juice of two jars of the roasted peppers. And one can of carnation milk. And then you have the achote. The achote, I didn't measure it. It's just until you get this nice, like, reddish color okay or brown brown red color all right so we need more seasoning so we're gonna put more sazonador try to leave the salt for last okay add the other stuff first and the salt you add very little at a time because you don't want to overdo it we're going generous on everything else and then on the salt we're just gonna go a little bit I'm ready to show you how to prepare uh, the first one. I'm gonna show you two of them. So the first thing you do is you're gonna take a banana leaf that's already cut. I'm gonna put it here. We're gonna hold the paper lengthwise. Okay, this way. You need a brush and you need a plate of achote I told you about. So with the brush. Dip it in the achote and put it onto the banana leaf and spread it around. This prevents it from sticking when it's boiling. Okay. The next is I have the masa here. I'm using a measuring cup to make them all the same size. So half a cup of your masa. Okay. Put it in the middle of the banana leaf and spread it. Okay. And then for your meat, whether you're doing the chicken or the pork, you're gonna use one third cup, a measuring cup. So you get them the same. Don't, you don't have to put so much juice because then it'll come out on the sides. Okay? Okay. Now, if you want spicy, you want a little bit of heat, then you can add um, your hot peppers here. Okay, so you're gonna fold it in half first. Okay, you're gonna fold this part over. You're gonna fold this part over again. And then the next thing I do is that then I bring it all the way to the end scene where I did and then did a line there okay then you're going to flip this over okay then you're going to turn it around push it up and you're going to flip this fold this over turn this part around flip it up fold it over you have here your first part there Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do it again. Let's take this one. Okay. So let's see, okay. Half a cup of masa. Bloopers. <laughs> Half a cup of masa. One third cup of your choice of meat. Take out as much juice as you can. And 
And now the cold. And half first. Okay. Start pushing it. Make the line. Okay. Fold one flap. Fold again two flaps. Okay, the same size. Then I'm gonna fold a big one onto the line that I made here. And then you're gonna move this over. Okay, press down and push up. Then turn the other side. It's the same thing. I'm just gonna push some of the muscle in. down push up same thing now it does happen sometimes when you get one a little longer than the other you just have to mess with it to get them the same size then you put them you invert them you have to this the flaps have to touch each other okay for you to touch them for you to uh, tie them so now I'm going to show you how to tie and the ribbon you're going to use it um, from the arm to the length of your other arm that's how I do it okay so there's different ways of tying it so I'm just gonna show you one way okay so I have it even I'm gonna bring this over here okay I'm gonna tie it okay twist one side and flip it over tie it crisscross it Back over, crisscross it again because the ribbon is long enough. I just like to make sure that it, it's really closed. And then, right here, you're going to tie it. Wait a minute. I'm going to make the tie first. Oh, yeah, the scissors here. And then whatever part that's too long, you cut right off. And here you have it. First pair of pateras. Now, this caja is going to make you eight and a half dozens, okay? Depending on the size. If you follow the way I showed you and you use the measurements I showed you and the measuring cup, it should give you eight and a half dozen to nine dozen. I usually get eight and a half dozen. Okay, so thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and share this video because the holidays are around, right around the corner. And I'm pretty sure that there are going to be other people looking for exact measurements just the same way I was a few years ago. Hey guys, so one more thing before I let you guys go. Um, if you are the type of person that you like, you love um, pasteles, but you do not love the process, you hate the process, then um, make it easier for yourself and just look me up on Facebook and you can place an order and I will gladly do the pasteles for you. I sell them for $28 a dozen. Also, and I'm going to put a link in the bottom and it is to my um, Mana Bakery. And you can check it out and also look at the other desserts that I make and I do sell. And I will be selling the traditional um, desserts for the holidays as well. So thank you for liking my video and thank you for watching. Bye.